that high quality of wisdom which is engendered by focalized experience, authoritative wisdom, and this in itself is a vital factor in the settling of any local universe. As it is with the spirit fusers, so it is with those sun-fused mortals who have achieved residential status on Uversa. Some of these beings hail from the earliest epochs of Orvantan, and they represent a slowly accumulating body of insight-deepening wisdom which is making ever-augmenting service contributions to the welfare and eventual settlement of the seventh super-universe. What the ultimate destiny of these stationary orders of local and of super-universe citizenship will be, we do not know. But it is quite possible that, when the Paradise Finaliters are pioneering the expanding frontiers of divinity in the planetary systems of the first outer space level, their sun and spirit-fused brethren of the ascendant evolutionary struggle will be acceptably contributing to the maintenance of the experiential equilibrium of the perfected super-universes while they stand ready to welcome the incoming stream of paradise pilgrims who may, at that distant day, pour in through Orvantan and its sister creations as a vast spirit-questing torrent from these now uncharted and uninhabited galaxies of outer space. While the majority of spirit fusers serve permanently as citizens of the local universes, all do not. If some phase of their universe ministry should require their personal presence in the super-universe, then would such transformations of being be wrought in these citizens as would enable them to ascend to the higher universe, and upon the arrival of the celestial guardians with orders to present such spirit-fused mortals at the courts of the Ancients of Days, they would so ascend, never to return. They become wards of the super-universe serving as assistants to the celestial guardians and permanently, save for those few who are in turn summoned to the service of Paradise and Havona. Like their spirit-fused brethren, the sun-fusers neither traverse Havona nor attain Paradise unless they have undergone certain modifying transformations. For good and sufficient reasons, such changes have been wrought in certain sun-fused survivors, and these beings are to be encountered ever and anon on the seven circuits of the central universe. Thus it is that certain numbers of both the sun and the spirit-fused mortals do actually ascend to paradise, do attain a goal in many ways equal to that which awaits the father-fused mortals. Father-fused mortals are potential finaliters. Their destination is the universal father, and him they do attain, but within the purview of the present universe age, finaliters as such are not destiny attainers. They remain unfinished creatures, sixth-stage spirits, and hence non-active in the evolutionary domains of pre-light and life status. When a mortal finaliter is trinity-embraced, becomes a trinitized son, such as a mighty messenger, then has that finaliter attained destiny, at least for the present universe age. Mighty messengers and their fellows may not, in the exact sense, be seventh-stage spirits, but, in addition to other things, the Trinity embrace endows them with everything which a finaliter will sometime achieve as a seventh-stage spirit. After spirit-fused or sun-fused mortals are trinitized, they pass through the paradise experience with the adjuster-fused ascenders, with whom they are then identical in all matters pertaining to super-universe administration. These trinitized sons of selection or of attainment, at least for now, are finished creatures, in contrast to the finaliters, who are at present unfinished creatures. Thus, in the final analysis, it would be hardly proper to use the words greater or lesser in contrasting the destinies of the ascending orders of sonship. Every such son of God shares the fatherhood of God, and God loves each of his creature sons alike. He is no more a respecter of ascendant destinies than is he of the creatures who may attain such destinies. The Father loves each of his sons, and that affection is not less than true, holy, divine, unlimited, eternal, and unique. A love bestowed upon this son and upon that son, individually, personally, and exclusively and such a love utterly eclipses all other facts. Sonship is the supreme relationship 
of the creature to the Creator. As mortals, you can now recognize your place in the family of divine sonship, and begin to sense the obligation to avail yourselves of the advantages so freely provided in and by the Paradise Plan for Mortal Survival, which plan has been so enhanced and illuminated by the life experience of a bestowal son. Every facility and all power have been provided for ensuring your ultimate attainment of the Paradise Goal of Divine Perfection. Presented by a Mighty Messenger temporarily attached to the staff of Gabriel of Salvington.